Hi everyone, welcome to Agrolor's Devlog. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the spline paths that I started working on again. I actually did this about seven months ago, and then I stupidly removed the project and from my computer because I moved to a next uh, to a new computer. But I also uh, managed to delete the entire Bitbucket online repository containing all the code, which is just marvelous. So I had to start over again and I was kind of, well, not looking forward to it. But anyway, I sat down this week and I finally managed to create, uh, recreate the splines and uh, set up this, uh, this simple testing scene. So before I go into how things work, let's just give you a, uh, I'll just give you a quick demonstration on the progress, which is about how the splines are created and how objects can follow the spline itself. The rotation is not yet done, so um, or it's not done yet, so uh, that's something for the next video. So here we go. We have this plane with an emitter attached to it, and it's going to follow this spline, as you can see. We also see this uh, this cylinder, which will also follow the path, and it will be spawned every three seconds. So we can see this guy uh, coming around every now and then. And here's the airplane coming and it's gonna fly lovely into this curve which I've set up across this scene and this last segment here this last spline is really large and as you can see the uh, those little orbs they're further away from each other but they still show the spline very very well if you can imagine you can imagine if the rotation is working for this well you can have very lovely camera paths uh, or airplane path or any other kind of aircraft or some sort of roller coaster uh, factory belts uh, you name it everything that goes onto a, a cool path uh, you can also create uh, imagine if you have some sort of wizard that casts a spell that sort of rotates you could create a spline path for that as well the the things that you can do with that are, are really cool so uh, one last thing if I press space a couple of times I'm gonna manually spawn these objects and that just looks really cool it's really satisfying to see that happen yeah <laughs> i just love playing around with that so how does this look because all these objects that we are currently spawning they all move independently on this spline and they can also have their own speed so they can uh catch up and actually just go a lot faster on these splines and the splines can loop so they can move around forever if I wanted to. So let's look at the basics of the uh, of the spline. It actually all starts here at node number one. As you can see I have a camera path object. Let's collapse these guys. And this camera path uh, has the spline Lua script attached. Uh, I'm just gonna say it has a test follower object which is this uh, plane right here. And then I have all these debug options so that I can uh, visualize the spline when, once I'm inside, uh, inside the game in, well, running the game. Of course, I can turn these all off when I'm actually releasing the game so that I don't see the spline itself. So what's inside this spline? We have these nodes, and this is the first node. And a node has a uh, very, very simple settings. It has a next node, and then it has the amount of segments that it needs to create in order to create a lovely spline. This can be set to a minimum of two to create a very basic line of or point to point uh, sort of spline, which is no longer really a spline, it's just a, a line, but uh, it, it still uses that same mechanism. And those, well, those blue balls, those are the nodes. So that one over there, that's the next node. And these purple ones, there's actually only one visible right now. And those are the handlers. They are gonna pull on that line that goes from node to node to make these curvatures in the line. So if I select the first node, and A is always the outgoing one, it will yank on that line that goes from here straight to there. And this, this one sort of yanks on that line and it pulls that line towards it. So if I could really exaggerate that effect I could just really drag that guy all the way up here and if I would run the game then that line will be yanked upwards a lot there we go we got this 
cool effect that it's being pulled towards that handler. Now, of course, the biggest downside currently is that I have to run the game in order to actually see the spline. So this is really something that I'm looking forward to in Letworks 5, where we can, I don't know, sort of create editor scripts where we can actually, uh, for instance, if I drag this guy around, this A handler, that it would recreate the spline for me and show me the actual result inside the editor. I can sort of create this with a shader, but it's not really what I want to do. It's, it's not, it doesn't feel uh, really natural. There are a lot of workarounds to actually get the desired result, and it's not that easy to do. So I'm just gonna have to run the game, which just gives you the best result. And you'll just have to tweak around a little bit. So how do you get objects onto this path? How do you do that? That's actually really simple. Let's select this plane here. Uh, I created a, a very simple pivot, pivot which, uh, to which I attach the spline follower script. I'm simply setting a speed. Well, rotation mode is not yet working. That's something uh, I have to do yet. And then you, all you have to say is uh, attach this object to the path. And since the camera path has this test follower object, uh, we can simply test out one single object, but we can also very easily do this by script. Let me just pick up the, uh, this is the spawner, which is a pivot there as well. Its position doesn't really matter. And I'm simply gonna say, give me the path and give me the object to spawn. And in this case, it takes three seconds before every entity is spawned. And all it really does, because this top part, that's just the timer part, and that I can press space to spawn objects. But all I'm really doing is this, to simply get the path, get it script, call the add follower function, and simply uh, make an instance of the entity that you want to spawn. And that's it, there's nothing else to it. And then it simply clones this guy, makes an instance, and it puts it on the path. So all these instances, they are having their own spline follower. They're all independent from each other. And that makes it really cool because we don't need to personally have this static object that flies around like this plane, which, which of course is really cool. But let's say that instead of this uh, plane, let's, let's remove that guy. Um, let's add the camera to that path follower. And the camera itself, it no longer has the spectator, which has uh, physics and stuff. No, I'm gonna give it the, I created a little, different script uh, the camera scripts right here it's gonna be the free look camera which means that the camera is still moving across that spline but we have the availability to just look around with the mouse let's see have I do I have everything set up correctly I could turn off the spawner for now because I don't want to interfere it with the uh, lovely camera path maybe the look speed I don't know if that's a nice default setting there we go. And now I am following that spline path and I can just look around. And that's really cool if you have some sort of demo for your awesome looking scene. And I've, I've just created this terrain in like five or 10 minutes because you can re create really cool looking terrain with the uh, editor. But everything is right in its place. Of course, I, uh, as you can see, I have this offset from the pivot, which uh, makes me not entirely at the exact position of the spline, but it's, that's so very easily to fix with the spline followers. And you can just imagine if you have some really cool, maybe I'll add some music to this video so that this looks really calmly. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna create a nice looking drain and then just fly through it very gently. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the things that I have to tell you in this first uh, developer blog. So stay tuned for the next developer blog where I'm going to add the rotation, which will make uh, these planes and these camera paths even more awesome. Okay, thanks for checking out this video. Hope to see you again with the next one.